Hello, my name is Will Morris. I make pop music, I make R&B music. I've been working on it for about five years now. Uh, not all good, obviously. Uh, there's been growth. Started getting my passion for music as a kid. You know, I always loved the Wiggles and all that and would always do concerts for my family in the living room whenever the family always got together. And then one day I I heard this song by the Jonas Brothers on the TV and I was like, man, this band's cool. Was a fan of them for years and I went to a concert and when I saw that concert, it was the first time I really saw that true artist and fan interaction and my love for music went from not just, oh, I, I think it'd be fun to be an artist to this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. I want to be able to make music and have this type of connection with big groups of people and be able to perform and share my story through three, four minute songs that hopefully other people can connect their own lives and stories to. So that's been how I got to this point and how I started making music. I took lessons for five years and I took piano for 10 years. So really I've been in the music world for a very, very long time. And you know, came here studying film. I considered studying music, but um, I heard horror stories about what it was like studying music. So I was like, I think I can do music on my own, but I'd rather study in film. It's definitely been a challenge to balance my personal life, music, and film, because you ask most people that are in a film school, personal life kind of goes out the door. And so how am I going to balance my personal life, my school life, and then also music, which is a whole nother life of mine. And it's been, it's been a struggle, and uh, it's really, you got to pick your battles. You have to pick which one is priority at the moment. Um, right now, I'm working on an album. I just wrapped working on a feature film, and I've had a lot of stuff. This is my personal life. You know, I know a lot of people. I have a lot of stuff going on, friends and family back home and here. They have to balance it all out, and you don't try to. I try not to stretch myself too thin, but make sure I'm paying attention and spending time towards everything that I set aside. So, really. To balance it, it's not try to balance all things at once because if you do that, two things are going to get left on the back burner. One thing is going to become priority and it's going to show on the other two things the lack of effort and time put into it. And really it's picking your battles and making sure that at separate times you set time aside to, you know, take time to address my personal life and have, you know, me time because that's very important when you're going 14, 16 hour days on a film shoot. And when you're working on that film sheet, you don't have time to work on music. It's all film. But then once that's done, it's kind of going back to the music portfolio and be like, all right, where was, what was I working on before the film started? And here we are now. So that's really the balance of all three. The decision to go to film really goes back to about the same time I got into music. When I was a little kid, um, same time I got into the Jonas Brothers and the music, you know, I was going to movie theaters and. I grew up watching movies, that was kind of our household. We watched movies all the time, and then I got into acting. And so I started doing theater shows at my high school, and kind of did some community shows, and did some camps. Acting and singing was my first love. It's not like I can really pick one over the other. Um, they're both so vastly different from each other. And to get into the film industry, you know, you hear a lot, it's a one in a million opportunity and I saw an opportunity to get my foot in the door by taking the film production major. So that way, to get my foot in the door of the industry, I know how to do gaffing. I can do any, basically I can do at least basic starter work in any department in film, as well as I'm more, I consider myself to have more knowledge in certain departments to where I could go and be a DP or audio mixer for film and feel comfortable in that job. And it's, it's such a technical world, I feel like as an actor sometimes we take advantage of the world that is behind us or around us because we're just so in the moment. And I wanted to be able to be in a position where I can appreciate being in a film and when I'm acting I can appreciate the guy in the back corner that's, you know, sitting down after a long day's work. It's like I'm not going to be like, that guy needs to stand up. I'm like, you know, I was in that guy's position one day. I know what he's going through 
and you know, I just want to be able to empathize for everyone on the film program and on the film set and not feel like I hold a higher priority because I would be the actor or the director or whatever. It, I believe everyone serves a purpose and that's why I want to take the film program is so I can experience firsthand the different ventures for everyone. Uh, that's, that's the beautiful thing about the uh, world of art is you don't have to tie ourselves down to anything. It's not this or that. Obviously, if I had to pick one, I probably would get music. I do, there's just a connection that I have with music that I write and performing music that it's just different. And you know, when it comes to act in the film, it's, it's just so vastly different worlds and I enjoy them both. And the relationships I've built in both worlds just tell me that I, I couldn't choose between the two. Um, but film-wise, I could definitely see myself going forward, obviously, as an actor, uh, also as director. But really, when it comes to going forward, I see myself doing a little bit of everything. Definitely have not had that moment yet. Uh, when I go back and look at my discography, I really see... There were moments in the past where I'm like, this is going to be the thing that takes off. This is going to be the thing that takes off. And I go back and I look at it, and I'm like, you idiot. That, that, that's terrible. That song's terrible. So with this album I'm working on now, uh, it really comes from a very personal experience and I spent a lot of time nurturing the album and making sure that the songs on the album fit the story and the narrative. And really, one thing I've learned is not to rush anything because I want to reach that moment where I feel like this is the moment because I haven't had it and I've been wanting it and dreaming about it for five years now. And I think sometimes my music from the past hurts the chances of this going off because that's what people have heard before. And with this music, I just, there's something about it. I think, you know, I've previewed it for many people and one thing that they've said is, that song will hit with this group. This song will hit with this group. This song, I really feel this song. This song you got really vulnerable in. And I wanted to make a point in this music that I'm going to get very vulnerable and remain personal to my story. And I'm excited for it. It's, it's kind of like a story that I kind of don't want to get out, but it's going to get out in a very personal way and you know what will come after that hopefully you know the music will take off uh, hopefully no feelings are hurt when that album comes out but you know that's stuff that's out of my control but I can just look at it from afar and be like I did what I felt was right I did what going back on the why the album is so personal why I think this one is it one thing I've really learned over the years use music and lyrics as my coping mechanism make sure if I'm ever in a bad mental state, you know, don't just simmer that mental state. You know, go and make music and just try to, and I found that that was my escape. I could just go into my room, lock myself in there, and if I was feeling a type of way, I just got on my computer and I just wrote a song and I had a whole song within like an hour or two of just sitting down. And I just feel like there's just something about this music that people are going to see. It's like, that was, this is different than before. This is more personal. There's a vulnerability, a personality to the music that just wasn't there before, and I'm excited for people to hear later this year. I like to talk a lot about the spur of the moment ideas of songs. Uh, I think of a story a couple of months ago, me and my buddies were going to a Washington football team game, and on the way back, my buddy was playing a song in a truck. I heard one lyric in that song, and there was this song called Scars that was just sitting on my head, but I just could not figure out how to write it and where to go with it. And I heard one lyric in this song that he was playing. And I took my phone while I was driving at night, not a great idea, don't recommend it, and typed down two lyrics, put my phone back down, drove the rest of the way home. And he went, did you just write lyrics to a song? I went, yeah, I'll probably have it done tomorrow. Next day, I just took those two lyrics, sat down, I'm like, I know what this song is. 30 minutes later, that song was written, had music, and it was a version of done. Obviously, there's a lot of work past that, but at a bass version, I had a finished song. So I, I really love these spur of the moment ideas. I think I try to make sure, even if I have like an idea before I go to sleep, I'll like, I'll remember it in the morning. There's no chance I'll remember it in the morning. I make sure to go on my phone and go into notes and type down just whatever is on my mind. Or if I'm driving, type down whatever's on my mind. Or if I'm out in public and I just see something or I think of something, I just go in my phone notes and I write it down. And then when I had the time, I go back, I sit down, and I'm like, this is what I want. I know the song I want to write. Let me sit down and just hammer it out. Because I've also learned there's no good in starting a song, pausing the process, say, you know what, I'll go back and finish it later. 
because you're going to lose the heart of the song because the heart of the song exists in the moment you write it and that only exists from beginning to end if you do it in one setting. So I try to make sure I don't start writing a song unless I know I have at least an hour or two that I could just sit down there, put my head down and chop out a song. And that's a lot of the album, the album that I'm working on. Most of those songs were like, I would go to my room and say, I know this song, write it in an hour. And I had essentially a version of the album done in a week. And so the process varies for if I want to sit down and write it or if I want to just spur the moment. And I think it just, it happens by chance. I don't think there's a planning period to either one. I think it's just what feels right in the moment. There's one song. I mention it a lot. When people ask, how did I become a Jonas Brothers fan? When I was about six years old, back in 2009, I was sitting at my grandparents' house on, during the summer, just sitting on the floor watching the Disney Channel. And before, between episodes, sometimes they'd show an abbreviated version of a music video. And so I was just watching, and I've heard of the Jonas Brothers before, but I was never a fan. And they, their song Paranoid came on. And something about that song just, just had me just hooked. So I, told, I called my grandma, I said, hey, get in here. She came in there, I said, look at this band. I said, I don't know, this song is great. And she was like, yeah, that song's great. So the next week she went to Walmart to pick up groceries and she brought me a CD. And it was a CD that had that song on it, but it was their album from that year, Lines, Finds, and Trying Times. And I had a little CD player with a little pair of headphones, and I would, I just popped in the song, the CD, and it's history from there. You know, I, I definitely say I owe everything to that song because, as crazy or as cliche as it may sound, I wouldn't be here if that song never existed or if I'd never heard that song on that day because I say a lot of stuff I've done even including film that's not related to music I don't think I would be in either of these worlds had I not heard that song on that day that song really changed my life and so when I hear that song I just it's just a certain like feeling that just comes with it and it's just like a thankfulness I was like man I can't wait I hope I get to meet him one day so I can tell him how special that song was for me